Hello and welcome to RoboBoat 2011. I'm Zoz Brooks and I dig robots. I travel all over the world building robots and teaching robotics. And my favorite kind of robots is autonomous robots. These are robots that can make their own decisions without a human having to tell them what to do every step of the way. And that's what this competition is all about. Autonomous robotic boats that can navigate a difficult course and accomplish complex tasks along the way, all without human intervention. Let's go take a look. RoboBoat is a student competition. So all teams competing have to be primarily made up of school or university students. But don't let that fool you into thinking things are simple. These teams build their own hardware and software from scratch to make robotic boats that can autonomously make their way through a grueling course that would challenge the professionals. Navigating the course and performing the tasks autonomously means that the boats are completely under their own onboard computer control. There's no remote control, there's no asking the humans for help along the way. Once it's let loose, it's all on its own. That means the students have to use artificial intelligence techniques to program the robot to respond to unpredictable situations and unknown information, and still do the right thing. It's not easy, but that's what makes it a fun competition worth doing. I'm here with Felix Peugeot, the technical director of this year's RoboBoat competition. So uh, tell us a little bit about the course, Felix. Just before going into the water, the boats are actually being weighed. They've been trying to go with smaller vehicles, lighter material, which is always a good thing. The first thing we do when we put the vehicle in the water is we actually hook a digital scale to the vehicle and with that they're going to try to go at maximum thrust and generate as many pounds of thrust as they can. I noticed these uh, green and red floating buoys there, uh, what are they for? The first set is actually what we call the starting gate. The starting gate is made to make sure that the boat is able to navigate without too many issues. So pretty much driving in a straight line, that's the first ability they really have to prove under autonomous control. Okay, and then what happens next? There's a, one more set of large marker, and this is the one that we call the speed gate. So the speed gate gives us the information about how fast the vehicle is able to move. Right after that, the vehicle has to navigate between red and green buoys in a pair, while avoiding yellow buoys, which represent obstacles. The blue buoy marks the end of the channel and the start of the four advanced tasks, themed after the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Let's go take a closer look at those four. For the Earth task, the robotic boats have to actually do something on land. They've got a ramp, they've got this square of astroturf, and a pink tennis ball velcroed to the turf. And they've got to somehow get up here, or send something up here, pick up the tennis ball and take it with them. So this is the air station. There's four metal plates here with logos on them, and behind each of them is an electric heater. But only one of them's turned on and the teams don't know which one. So the boat has to work out the hot one, then use its camera to work out what logo it has and what the GPS coordinates of the station is here on the ground. All of that information gets transmitted off board back to the judges. That's a very tough task. This is the water station. There's a sprinkler here causing a waterfall and a stop button. The boats have to work out where it is, come in under the waterfall and press the stop button to shut off the water. That's a dangerous task for them because there's water falling on the boat. If they're not properly waterproofed, they could fry their entire electronics. The fire task is just what it sounds like. They've got to put out a simulated fire. So they've got to find this burning boat. It's got a hole cut in it. They have a water cannon on the boat to squirt water through the hole. It fills a cup and when enough water gets through, up comes a flag. To build a robotic boat, you need four main things. You need a thing that floats, you need a propulsion system, you need some sensors, and you need a computer to tie everything together and make all the decisions. For propulsion, teams use everything from electric dinghy motors to homebrew model motors to commercial micro-submarine thrusters. There are lots of sensors that teams can use depending on their strategy and their budget. Almost all teams use cameras to detect the colored buoys and GPS systems and digital compasses to determine their boat's location. Some teams have more expensive sensors like LiDAR, which is like radar using light instead of radio waves. And of course, teams have various pieces of equipment for attempting the optional tasks, including thermal sensors, water cannons, and deployable ground vehicles. The robotic boats all have some similarities, but they're also quite different from one another, and that keeps things interesting. RoboBoat is about real-world robotics, and there's more to robotics in the real world than just building something that works. You've also got to be able to communicate what you've done to sponsors, funding agencies, or customers. So that's part of the competition here at RoboBoat as well. RoboBoat is sponsored by AUVSI Foundation and the Office of Naval Research. So teams are required to make a full professional presentation to expert judges. This is called static judging. 
Teams will earn points for the quality of their PowerPoint presentation, written paper, show and tell of the robot itself, and their team uniforms. Even in robotics, it's important to look cool. The teams have packed up their tents, but they've taken their robots with them. And you know they're still working away, hacking on them tonight, probably all night, in preparation for the qualifying rounds tomorrow. That's where they'll get two chances to amass the maximum number of points to see if they get a spot in the finals. So make sure to tune in tomorrow to see how they did in the qualifying rounds. We'll be doing another recap. And then, of course, on Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, we have the live webcast of the finals on RoboBoat.org.